With the stroke of his pen, Governor J.B. Pritzker made Illinois the ninth state to ban assault-style weapons. Today, I couldn't be prouder to say that we got it done. It's time that we protect Illinois communities. It's time that we protect Illinois families. Many months later, The 7th District U.S. Court of Appeals states that the AR-15 is not protected under the Second Amendment. So then why does the Second Amendment say arms? Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Farms, LLC, PAN Farms, NRA Certification and Multifaceted Gun Training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfarmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like my channel, like my content and what I do here, you can support me with the link. Everything is appreciated. Let's talk about this. This 7th District U.S. Court of Appeals is hearing the, K the Illinois assault weapons ban and in a two to one vote, the literally said that the AR-15, layman's terms, is not covered under the Second Amendment. And once again, I'm hearing the same gaslighting argument as to why that is. Because historically, logically, and based on the wording of the Second Amendment, it doesn't hold up. But I want to come in to here. Federal Appeals Court upholds Illinois semi-automatic weapons ban. Now, Federal Appeals Court on Friday upheld Illinois prohibition on high power. That shows you they don't know nothing. High power. Semi-automatic weapons refusing to put a hold on the law adopted in response to the mass killing of seven people in the 2022 parade in the Chicago suburb of Highland Park. Now, I'm going to scream. I'm, I'm, I'm calling racism here. Yeah, I'm going to call racism. It took this event at a Chicago suburb of Highland Park for them to make an assault weapons ban when the inner city of Chicago, the urban areas, have been losing people, have been losing their lives every day to gun violence. You don't need any laws, but hey, I, I'm going to go there. Let a bunch of suburban white people get killed. Oh yeah, we need gun control. Don't care what's going on in this city. Yeah, I'm going there. I'm going there. Chicago has been a killing field for decades, but this event, we need an assault weapons ban. How convenient. But a three-judge panel of the 7th District U.S. Court of Appeals voted 2-1 on the issue. The majority recognized the difference between firearms for personal use and those the state law reserves for trained professional semi-automatic weapons, including the popular AR-15. Well, that's absolute nonsense. When the Second Amendment was written, the musket was a weapon of war and everybody had a musket. And despite what Joe Biden says, cannons were owned by private citizens. It's absolute nonsense. But like I said, you're going to hear some language in here where you're going to be like, that doesn't make any sense when put to his history and the wording of the Second Amendment, but, quote, there is a long tradition unchanged from the time when the Second Amendment was added to the Constitution, supporting a distinction between weapons and accessories designed for military and law enforcement use and weapons designed for personal use, Judge Diane Wood said in the opinion. The legislation now before us respect and relies on that distinction. Well, I'm sorry, Diane, you're full of crap, okay? There is no distinction between weapons for military use, law enforcement, and weapons designed for personal use, period. The right of the people to keep and bear arms. It doesn't say right of the people to keep and bear arms that are for personal use, that are not solely licensed for law enforcement or military use. It doesn't say that. But Ed Sullivan, the lobbyist for the Illinois State Rifle Association said gun right advocates were not surprised by the decision, neither am I. The seventh district is is flaming liberal, but it is what it is. Given the court's political makeup, 
Though only one of the three judges was appointed by a Democrat president, Sullivan said it's likely that plaintiffs in one or more of the multiple cases consolidated in Friday's opinion would seek a U.S. Supreme Court review where he predicted victory. And this would be great. And you, you, this would be phenomenal. Okay? At least eight other states and the District of Columbia have some sort of prohibition on semi-automatic weapons. The law adopted by lame duck session legislature in January, I talked about this, prohibits the possession, manufacture, or sale of semi-automatic rifles and high capacity magazines, takes effect January 1st. Known as the Protect Illinois Communities Act, which once again is a joke, is a joke. It bans dozens of specific brands or types of rifles and handguns, 50 caliber handguns, attachments, and rapid firing devices. No rifle will be allowed to accommodate more than 10 rounds with a 15 round limit for handguns. And if you saw the opening video that I played, that really worked out for them. As you saw that shootout in an urban area in Chicago. Yeah, they, they, they really don't want to get it. They don't really, really don't want to get it. But now, of course, they have a registration period for so-called assault weapons in the state. And unfortunately, they're going to have to kind of go along with it because they couldn't get the stay from this court, which they weren't going to get anyway. So it don't matter. But and we come down to here. The Illinois Supreme Court upheld the law on a 4-3 decision in August. Wow, that was close. Quote, the Protect Illinois Community Act is a common sense law that will keep Illinoisians said, safe, Governor J.B. Pritzker said in a statement. This is a man that supports abortion. Think about that. Despite constant attacks by the gun lobby that puts ideology over people's lives, here in Illinois, we have stood up and said, no more to weapons of war on the street. Well, <laughs> oh boy, they, they, I'm telling you, these people send out memos to each other. These are your talking points for today. Write them down and memorize them. Gun right advocates have argued that it's illogical to define semi-automatic guns as only suitable for the military. They say there are myriad reasons a homeowner would choose to protect family and property with an AR-15 as opposed to a handgun, and such semi-automatic weapons are the choice of many gun owners for sport shooting and hunting, they say. Further, they note protections the U.S. Supreme Court issued in its June 2022 decision in the case known as Bruin for guns in common use. The AR-15 is one, they say, given the millions in Hughes households today. But the court noted that the gun's popularity rocketed when the 10-year federal assault weapons ban expired in 2004. So what? It's still common use. How does when it becomes popular make it not commonly used? It, it, it's, a, it's, not, it's a bad argument. Most of the AR-15s now in use were manufactured in the past two decades, Wood wrote. Thus, if we look to the numbers alone, the federal ban would have been constitutional before 2004, but unconstitutional thereafter. Okay. Now, and then, this is really interesting because I came across this, but the House sponsored the legislation represented Bob Morgan, a Democrat from the Chicago suburb of Deerfield, who attended the Highland Park. 4th of July parade where the deadly shooting occurred, praised the decision and joined Pritzker in calling for a congressional action. Quote, this law has already prevented the sale of thousands of assault weapons and high capacity magazines in Illinois, but the death toll in Chicago continues. Do you oh, we have, we, we prevented the sale of all these rifles and magazines to these people and the death toll continues in the city of Chicago. Making our state safer. <laughs> Morgan said, we must renew our calls for a nationwide ban on assault weapons and high capacity magazines in order to make mass shooting a thing of the past. Well, it's not going to make mass shootings a thing of the past. As, as, I, I don't know if these people are woefully ignorant or just, you know, I, I begin to suspect these people come from two different ideologies. Either they're just straight up authoritarians who believe that firearms should only be in the hands of those in power and the elite, which is themselves, or they are just narcissistic utopists who believe that no guns equals no crime. But no matter what, either way, they're both dangerous groups of people. But you gotta be kidding me. But this, this is not wholly unexpected because you know, these, a lot of these district courts, unfortunately, are very liberal. So we're gonna have to wait. We're gonna have to wait. This is now gonna go to the Supreme Court. I'm gonna hedge my bet here and say that the Supreme Court is gonna kick it back down to the district court and tell them, you need to relook at this and base your decision with on Bruin. Because that's what they did in the second district. Had the assault weapons being went to the district court, remember Judge Benitez said, it's un unconstitutional. District court said, no, it's not. Supreme Court said, eh, we're gonna kick this back down to you because you need to look at this based on Bruin. I think the same thing's gonna happen. But this is where 
our court system is just so pathetic. It's so slow because of stupidity like this. But sooner or later, one of these cases is going to make it to Supreme Court. And we're going to, once and for all, get a ruling to end this. Now, here's my little conspiracy theory. I believe that they pushed this thing so slowly in the hopes that the high court will flip some seats in favor of an anti-gun position. That's why I believe it takes so long for gun cases to get through the courts. Other cases, you, you see them get through year, two years. Assault weapon ban cases have been going through the court for four years now, four to five years. But once again, this gotta go to Supreme Court. They're gonna have to review it, but I think they're gonna kick it back down and tell them you need to look at this based on Bruin, which they won't do. Cause then the district court will kick it back down again probably to the Illinois Supreme Court. We're gonna to have to go through this all over again. Very inefficient, but to be expected. Let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one. Peace.